Okay, we're going to get started. Uh, on behalf of the Game Jean Museum of Art, I'd like to thank you all for joining us tonight and supporting the arts. Uh, this is uh, another in our series from Untold Stories. Uh, tonight's artist talk by Nancy Callan and Catherine Gray. Um, but before we get started, I'd like to pause for a second to uh, acknowledge um, the land that we stand on um, and the history uh, of the land that we stand upon, that before colonization, this was the land of the sovereign people of the Squamish and Duwamish and a host of other nations on the Salish Sea. We are protectors of the land and water that surround us. Uh, we pay respects to their elders, past and present, as they continue to live and protect the land and their culture for future generations. I'd also like to thank our sponsors, uh, the uh, Bainbridge Island Museum of Arts Prisons Cultural Program, the City of Bainbridge Island, Laird Norton Wealth Management, the Ames Family Foundation, Leslie and Michael LeBeau, Stoll Reeves, and KCTS9. Um, so tonight uh, we do have, a, uh, we have, sorry, <laughs> we have Nancy and uh, Catherine, and I'm going to turn the program over to Greg Robinson, our head curator here at BEMA, uh, to do their introductions. Um, we will be taking questions uh, throughout the program. Uh, if you want to use the buttons at the bottom of your screen, Q&A, um, we will collect those questions and get them answered for you uh, as we are able, okay? So without further ado, uh, please join me in welcoming Greg, Nancy, and Catherine. Thank you very much, Ken. I wanna welcome everyone here tonight. Everyone who's involved with BEMA really needs to, and those who aren't familiar yet, really need to come and see the show. I'd like to welcome you to Nancy Callan and Catherine Gray, The Clown and Me Loves You. And on behalf of Amy Sawyer, Associate Curator, I'd also like to say this exhibition is very lighthearted looking on the surface. It's a, a fun, lighthearted kind of romp through clown history in Clownsville, so to speak. Um, but there are so many layers of meaning here. These artists at the top of their field have decided to collaborate together. Catherine Gray from Los Angeles and Nancy Callan from Seattle have been friends for a long time in the glass world. And over the decades, they have really achieved amazing things in their own right, separately, um, technically, artistically. And it was really intriguing when we talked with them um, this process has been going on for a number of years. They collaborated for over four years. Um, why these two artists at this pivotal point in their individual careers would choose to do something fun, experimental, collaborate as they have. And so I, I think we'll learn more about that this evening. Um, this exhibition is open through September 26th and we're open every day. Um, BEMA um, has no closures and we're open 10 to five every day. We hope to see you here. And now I'd like the artists um, to introduce themselves. And they're going to be giving a tour of four of over 20 pieces in the exhibition. Uh, Hunter will actually be moving the camera around. This is a live presentation. So, um, you know, enjoy it and bear with us a little bit as, as we tour you around. Hi, everyone. Hi, thank you everyone out there in cyberspace that's joining us here tonight. We're really thrilled. Um, I'm Catherine. And I'm Nancy. And um, yeah, as Greg mentioned, we're going to um, talk about uh, four or five of the pieces that are in the show and um, hopefully give you kind of a sense of some of the things that inspire us and um, keep us uh, excited about making work together. And also, I'd like to add um, how happy we are to have the show here on Bainbridge Island. It is a, a beautiful ferry ride from Seattle. So if you have a chance to come out and see the show, please do. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I guess we're going to start off talking about uh, this piece called Lucky. And um, uh, Lucky is based loosely on a um, paint by number um, venue. and um, in growing up uh, in my house, we had paint by number um, 
paintings that my grandfather made and they were two clowns and one was lucky and one was grampy and um when you come and see the show you you'll see grampy over on the other wall and um so one of the thoughts that that we had when we were thinking about doing this collaboration was um you know making art accessible and talking about um like the paint by numbers how you know, anyone could be an artist. And um, so we decided to use this um, to create three pieces in this vein. And uh, we did, we kind of stepped out of our comfort zones with these pieces. Right, we're incorporating a lot of techniques that um, we don't typically use in our own individual work, but also incorporating techniques that we do. And I think that's part of the reason how we landed on um, kind of ripping on clowns is because of this Venetian glass blowing tradition of making clowns that some of the original versions are beautifully made, beautifully crafted, um, but they kind of quickly devolve into being um, not so well made, you know, kind of for the chashki and, and tourist market. And there's sort of an analogy there, I think, with the paint by numbers, mm -hmm. where it's sort of, again, kind of as making sort of this high art or high craft thing kind of accessible to the masses. So we felt like that was sort of a good analogy and also just a good spot for us to kind of use both of you know our different kinds of skills. You know, we, we both get referred to as being glass blowers working in a Venetian tradition, but we have very different sort of skill sets. But the clowns kind of were this point where there's a lot of overlap and where we could both kind of you know express ourselves in that, you know, in that trope. Exactly. And um, in this piece we have um what we did was uh, enamel the, uh, the lines and you can see if Hunter zooms in, you can see that there's, there's numbers in here. And we kind of did a little bit of filling in with uh, fire, on, fire on enamels and some airbrushing. And then Kathy makes, um, she made these like solid sculpted um, teardrops and she's She's a very proficient glass blower, and she loves doing like Venetian fruity bits. And so this gave her an opportunity to kind of like work in that way in the solid way. So uh, this has gone through several firings. And then in the end, we added these teardrops. Mm -hmm. And I'd also like to mention that uh, it's actually on a, a glass, on a piece of glass. And this is also blown glass. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how we make um, how we make these panels. Yeah, yeah. When we get to another piece, we'll mm -hmm. revisit it. But know that, you know, these patterns are, you know, one of the hallmarks of Nancy's um, particular work of using glass canes or colored rods to make these really intricate patterns. So a lot of this was just sort of an excuse for me to have Nancy like go to town making some of these things because these are skills I definitely don't have. But we would just kind of generate a lot of these um, panels, patterns, and, you know, have this kind of raw material to be inspired by and work from, see what they sort of spoke to us about in terms of how we wanted to proceed with making them into these clowns. Yeah. And, you know, glass is a very collaborative medium. Mm -hmm. And Kathy and I both don't have a lot of experience with like working with enamels, fired on enamels. And so, you know, we have, we got some help with um, like making our vision come true. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so we uh, got technical assistance by this wonderful artist that lives in Seattle, Suzanne Head. And uh, she really helped like, helped us navigate yeah. our dreams. Yeah, 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 bring some of these things to life. Yeah, because yeah. As, we, yeah, as Nancy said, these are, you know, we probably have seen some of these things done and maybe um, have a vague idea of how some of these things are done, but it was really, really helpful to have somebody who really knows how to do this stuff kind of help us with all of this. And she was a really, um, I mean, we've acknowledged her elsewhere, but it was a really big help in yeah. um, bringing this body of work to life. Yeah, really big help. Yeah. And, you know, I've always been interested in, in painting on glass and like, you know, exploring that avenue. I have a, um, a background in graphic design. So this is like, you know, right up my alley. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something that we wanted to talk about collaboration is, you know, like just being able to like, giving each other permission to like riff off of each other. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's been, it's been really pretty amazing. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah. Really easy collaboration. Really easy. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I think next we're going to talk about um, this piece called Tell Us How You Really Feel. So I'm not sure. Is this a good place to stand so people can see us? <laughs> Come over this way. Me? All right. All of us. <laughs> I'll be here. Okay. Great. Excellent. <laughs> so let's just take a moment and hear what's happening. Can you pick that up, Hunter? So if you can't quite make it out, um, there's a sound element to this piece. And in one horn, um, both horns have speakers in there. And in one horn is uh, playing a loop soundtrack of Nancy and I both crying. And in the other, it's the same thing of Nancy and I both laughing. Um, it's kind of a little surprising how similar they both sound. I know, I know. <laughs> but It's um, a fine line it between is. laughter and crying. And that's part of what we're talking about in these pieces, mm -hmm, in this mm -hmm. piece in particular, is, um, you know, the past five years and, and moving onward, um, you know, reading, reading the newspaper, listening to the news, like, basically, you don't know whether to laugh or cry. Right, and, right. And, you know, just trying to navigate uh, through these times, it really speaks this piece really speaks to that yeah. in, in our in our opinion. Yeah. 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 As Nancy said, just there's so many instances where we just didn't know like whether to laugh or cry. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we're using this form of the clown horn um, to you know replicate that sense of that's how clowns communicate or how a clown can communicate. Yeah. So we're trying to like send you know, broadcast that message a little bit and kind of maybe sort of a dead language, if you will, or a dead form, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but we did make these oversized um, uh, fast horns. And, and maybe we could talk a little bit about, um, again, sort of the collaborative nature of glass blowing, and in this case, really being reliant on um, you know, residencies that we've had that we've been able to use to kind of produce some of this work. Um, these pieces were made at the Museum of Glass in Tacoma with the crew there. Amazing, amazing hotshot team. Yeah, and um, big props yep, to them. Yeah, <laughs> and you know when you're blowing glass on this scale, I mean Kathy and I could probably do it by ourselves, but you know it's a lot easier when Good you one. have when you have some friends in there helping, and um, you know making something of this scale. So uh, as we were working through um making this show we had ideas of what we wanted to do and one of them was to make these oversized horns but we we didn't really have it quite dialed in mm -hmm. you know and so um when we made them the glass is clear like the um the horn part it was clear glass and we decided that we wanted to kind of mirrorize it and and make it silver and that that posed a lot of the problems. We ran through a lot of different options and scenarios mm -hmm. and did a lot of tests trying to figure out how to best do that. And um, through Nancy's perseverance, we landed on covering the clear glass with three or four layers of silver leaf. Yes, yeah. Each little square hand applied lovingly <laughs> <laughs> and uh, kind of burnished in and you know built up these layers. So it really does look like a mirror finish. It looks like it's made out of chrome. Um, and that's intentional too. And you know, with the title and some of the other um, pieces in the show, you know, we want that bring that element of the audience into the piece. So you know, having your reflection kind of animate the piece is kind of a big uh, part of it for us in that um, you know, we're all kind of in this together. Yeah, and the and the sound element really brings the viewer in too, because you walk past and you're not sure what you're hearing. So you know, the viewer comes in, and when you and when you're leaning into it, you do see yourself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. So it's like a funhouse mirror. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's really a little bit gut wrenching standing here it listening is. to us crying. Oh, the, the, the crying one would break my heart. 
And yeah. When we first heard it, I was like, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're going to have to listen to that all day in the museum. Yeah. Luckily, it's offset by the laughing, it which is, does sound, is. you know, like we're having a good time. Yeah. 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 And, it, and it's a little quiet, so. Yeah. 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 So, um, again, a really, a really um, personal piece, but very... It speaks to a lot of different subject matters. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, there's you know, sort of a universal message that people can take away from it as well, even yeah. though it does come from a very personal spot. Yeah. Shall we move to um, want to talk about floral glory yeah, yeah, and emoticon? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. All right. Great. So we will <laughs> mosey. <laughs> mosey. <laughs> So this is actually the first time we've seen this show fully installed with all the, the light, paint and the lights and everything, and we are just loving it. So um, we're really hoping if you out, out there get a chance to come see it, that you'll love it as much as we do. We're really pretty thrilled. Yes. Um, and um, there's a, a surprise when you pull up to, oh, yeah, when to you the museum up, yeah, in the yeah, window. In the window. There's a special yeah. surprise yeah, for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So now we're going to talk about floral glory. Yeah, and maybe we'll start with this was maybe a good one to kind of explain um, how we get these panels because as we've been saying we're glass blowers, but we're looking at a lot of um, a lot of flat pieces that don't necessarily look like they're blown. So um, Nancy's going to take it away. I'll take it away. <laughs> so um, the panels are created uh, by blowing a cylinder and um, with these different patterns we end up um blowing blowing the cylinder with the pattern on the inside of of the cylinder and that takes several steps which i'm not going to go into because it's long and confusing so i'm just going to keep it kind of simple so basically you have a cylinder that's blown glass and it has a bottom on it so that gets cut off in the cold working process you take a diamond saw with water and you cut the bottom of that cylinder off so then you have a hollow a hollow tube. The next step is to cut um, a line, cut through on the on the long edge. So basically, you cut along here, and you make a little opening like this. Then you can sit in it in a kiln. There's different ways to do it, but you can sit it in the kiln or yeah, mm -hmm. in the annealer, mm -hmm. and um, you bring it slowly, bring it up to temperature, and then as it gets up to about uh, 1200 degrees it starts to open when it's about mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a lot of times it does but <laughs> but sometimes you have to get in there and like and use some sticks and and work it out so anyway so that here's your flat panel it's glass mm -hmm. and then here it is on the wall mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> just like that just like that yep. bingo 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 yep so, so this piece um, is uh, using a technique called Encamo. So it's different, um, basically different bubbles of. Um, we, oh. The screen was momentarily frozen. Oh, oh, I think we went offline. So if you would just um, start from because you're opening the cylinder up again with the annealer. You still got that cylinder? <laughs> I smashed it out there, but luckily it landed on a rug and it's in one piece. Are we ready now? Yeah. Oh, hi. Uh, okay, so um, I think we went offline for a minute, but anyway, so is the yes. it's in the it's in the annealer mm -hmm. that's in the kiln, mm -hmm. and uh, bring it up to uh, 1,200 degrees, mm -hmm. and it slowly starts to open. And you know, if all goes well, it just opens on its own. But sometimes you have to get in there, and with two people, you have two long sticks. And you're trying to like just to like get it to not touch down. Yeah, yeah it yeah. can be it can be a little hairy, yeah. but yeah, we had pretty good luck with yeah. all of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you have it. There is your flat glass. Yeah, and actually, it's historically mm. the way they used to make window pane mm -hmm. glass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, way when, back, way back when, way back when. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, a, an old technique and we kind of are sort of technique nerds. So it was kind of nice to sort of really make use of this technique. Yep. This particular panel, um, 
we use it in an Encamo technique, which is um, putting a bunch of bubbles together of different colors and sort of stacking them to make one bigger bubble and then blowing that out and making a cylinder. Um, it's a nice technique because you end up getting a little bit more like a kind of movement that you have that you see here, the sort of waviness. And so when this, we saw this panel all the way flat, you know, it immediately kind of looked like a flag to us um, for those the, the proportions and, and the stripes and stuff. And, um, you know, one thing that I think we've been thinking about in the last number of years is the way the flag is, is used in this country. This is not always in a way that we kind of are supportive of. And um, so we wanted to try to bring it back and make it something that we felt was ours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so again, Catherine is making these flower bits and um, they're really beautiful. And she kind of goes in a sort of pop art direction with them. And, um, and like when we're, when we're working on these collaborations, it was during COVID. It was definitely during COVID. And Kathy's in LA and I'm in Seattle. So she would make some parts. And I, I had the panels in my studio and she would ship the flowers. And yeah. then I would like arrange them on the on the panel. And I'd say, oh, we might need a little bit more color or you know, I'd tell her what to make. And then she would make <laughs> some more and send them my way. And then and then we would basically FaceTime yeah, yeah. and, you know, just arrange them. And it was clear that this was an American flag to us. Yeah, and we yeah. wanted to like, I don't know, just bring a little sense of hope to the flag. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the flowers to us are that, that beacon of hope, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's also, you know, it's pop art reference, even a reference to like kind of flower power and the hippie movement in that sense of like, being all of a community together, hoping to like change the world for the better. So yeah, those were yeah. sort of clear things that we were thinking about. And, you know, the black and the white and the gray stripes, we felt also were relevant in terms of like how polarized things seem to be now in our culture. Yeah. And, you know, that not everything is black and white, that you do need to have this sense of nuance or this gray area that, um, you know, can kind of straddle or bring the two, you know, polar opposites together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. luckily we had lots of extra flowers. <laughs> we had some extra flowers, and we had this beautiful panel um, that is very nostalgic of, of like clowns and circus tents. Circus tents, yeah, exactly. And we thought about making another clown, and we had a, a few different configurations. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. we had maybe a, a cross, a cross yeah, and yeah, an X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of Confederate right. flower power. But we ended up going with um, this uh, kind of smiley, and yeah. we named it a emoticon because um, it's, it's kind of the shorthand, like for how people, you know, especially texting and whatnot, yeah. like use these images to convey sort of deeper thoughts or emotions and or not so deep. or not so deep <laughs> yeah. and you know and i feel like that's sort of the same as a clown mask you know it's sort of this potentially sort of static expression that you can't necessarily really it's a little bit unnerving because it doesn't change and so i think there's something about kind of the insipidness of just the sort of a smiley face all the time, but there's also something that's really charming about yeah. it too, and really and just- hopeful. And hopeful, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So- Yeah, I think a lot of the time we were just really trying to cheer each other up. <laughs> through some yeah. dark times. Through some dark times, yeah. 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 yeah, and hopefully cheer everybody else up too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is done with uh, the same technique of blowing a cylinder, cutting it and opening it. Mm -hmm. and. This is, uh, we're using flat cane here, and you can see the diagonals are going a different direction as this one. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit different technique. Mm -hmm. So I want to go talk about the, the, yeah. the next piece. The next piece. Which would be? The Clown and Me Loves You. <laughs> and here we are. And here we are. You know, while standing over there and looking at the clown in me loves you, it's very ominous kind of piece in a way. It's feeling this huh. like like this looks like a surveillance camera yeah, or something. Maybe. Oh yeah. interesting. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. yeah. 
Well, so this is a piece that we have titled our show after. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about where the title came from? Sure. Um, so the title is, again, The Clown in Me Loves You. And um, so I was brought up Catholic, and I would hear this expression of people saying, the Jesus in me loves you. And um, I always thought that that was it just like contemplate what that meant and it stuck with me for years and years and years i'd always think of that expression and i think when we started making this 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 piece and you know thinking about the title that just like it sprang to mind because as you can see i don't know if you can tell but this is a very reflective surface it's mirrorized um so you're actually seeing yourself in the mirror and you know having the clowns around us all the time it kind of like made me more aware of the clown in me mm -hmm. and the clown in <laughs> kathy and kind of the clown in everyone right. and it's like i don't know like something about that that title is it's it's an intriguing title, I hope, we hope, and, you know, makes you think about actually the clown in you. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and again, you know, we're using the, the mirrored surface to, you know, bring the audience into the piece, you know, so you can kind of be your own clown with this piece. You know, the, I think this part hopefully is pretty obvious sort of references of so those rainbow wigs that clowns wear, but it's not, um, and you know, it's very intentional that we're using the rainbow as well to kind of, again, sort of incorporate this idea of like, we're all in this together, people of all stripes and orientations, whatever, you know, we're all kind of part of this, you know, larger humanity. Yeah. Oh, well said. <laughs> Thank you. Bring in the rainbow. <laughs> Bring in the rainbow. Bring in the rainbow. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it's hard to find common ground in people like there's so much like polarization. And so I think just taking a minute and just trying to understand, you know, your fellow clown is it's a really important thing to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might step in for just a second sure, and please. let the audience know um, if we're on. Um, oh step? yeah, thank yeah. you. Sorry, <laughs> it's like the COVID dance. So um, um, we do have um, a Q and A um, session. Ken is collecting questions, so if you want to enter those, Ken, I guess in the chat part, um, then um, he'll be selecting some to ask, and. Um, we have a good amount of time um, left for questions, and I might just kick it off with um, a couple that, that I have, actually, and I'll just step aside once I ask the question. Let me throw out a couple of questions. Um, is this um, series of work at 20 plus sculptures, do you feel it's completed? Are there other elements of it that you're um, thinking about? Um, that would be um, one question. Um, and then, one of the um, questions I received on the floor the other day um, had to do with, do the artists have a favorite piece and why? People are always curious about that. Yeah, piggyback on that, um, Dolly is asking, which, which piece brought you the most joy to make? Oh, 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 hi to Dolly. Yeah, I hi think Dolly. I, I think, well, yeah, you met Dolly when we were in Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah yes, yeah. yes. Um, well, the first question, uh, let's take these in, in turn here, uh, which was? <laughs> I know, I forgot. What was the first question, Greg? Oh, whether the work is, the, this body of work is complete. Yeah. Oh, oh OK. Yeah, everyone is just loving it so much. I think they want to, you know, they, want, the, they want more. They yeah, want the, 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 the clown show to come back and, to town. And, and the Ringling Brothers Circus announced, as, as you informed me in 2017, that they were coming to an end. And mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, the country, I don't think we're ready for this to come to an end. So. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't. We weren't. Um, I mean, we will definitely still work together. Yeah. Because it's just been such such an easy collaboration it's been so much fun i mean we have always loved working together even on our own individual work and so just to have this excuse to like have to work together all the time mm -hmm. um was really just an absolute joy so um we may add some pieces to this i think we still are kind of inspired by clown stuff but we're also just kind of thinking about future collaborations already and some things are kind of 
already in the works. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, like, making this work with you, um, I don't know about you, but this has been some of the, like, kind of weirdest work I've ever made. And yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, it's so it, it's so um, satisfying to to be able to do that and and collaborating. I think it gives you more like license to um, to be able to do that. Yeah, because yeah. as Greg mentioned, you know, we both have our own careers, and I don't know. You you kind of like work in a certain way on your own. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, this was like, it kind of blew us out of the water, I think. Yeah, yeah, you don't always have that opportunity to just like try something kind of weird and random that's yeah. a big left turn from what people are used to seeing from you. So mm -hmm. I think this kind of gave us cover, if you will, for like to try a bunch of things that we would, excuse me, wouldn't normally have the opportunity to try. Exactly, yeah. and and it was really fun going to different venues too, to make the work mm -hmm. and, and one of, one of the most fun things was when we went to uh, Coney Island mm -hmm. together because mm -hmm. we were teaching at um, Urban Glass and we had the opportunity to, well, we made the time to go to Coney <laughs> Island, do a little R&D, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was, it was so inspiring. We just took pictures and, you know, it was- Some of which are probably in the show in various yeah, formats, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, so just getting the inspiration for the show and, and I don't know, going on this journey has been, has been like such a gift. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So are there more clowns coming? Maybe. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are there are times where we're like, oh God, we should do this. You know, right, right, like, right. Yeah. We did make like a lot of cylinders that we converted into panels and we still have a, a, few, have a few left. left. Yeah, that we just never got figured out what to do with them. Mm -hmm. So we might kind of figure that out one day. To be announced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but our favorite piece, Oh boy. We have a favorite piece. We have a couple, I have a couple favorites. We do. Yeah, Lucky's one of my favorites. Yeah, that first one yeah. is, that we talked about is a yeah. beauty yeah. for sure. Um, there's Remember Me. Yeah, Remember Me, which, which is around the back. Yeah, yeah. Um, is also one of our favorites. It was mm -hmm. kind of a surprise with that for yeah. us, how that yeah. turned out. And we both were like, oh, we really love that. Yeah. So, um, but we do have others. They're all. Yeah. Really... I've, I'm kind of. I'm a little partial to Roly Poly too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the yeah. other sculptural pieces that's a, got a kinetic element mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. There's lots of favorites, and the we'd one... like to hear what your favorites are. Though. <laughs> yeah. Really, surely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then um, for Dolly's question, which is the one that brought us the most joy? Oh. Oh. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. Popsy, maybe. Like when we first Popsy. did that? Yeah, Popsy was our first paint by number piece. Yeah. And when that all started coming together and we figured out, like, we put these really ornate frames yeah. around the paint by numbers to kind of elevate them again, yeah. you know, from yeah. these kitschy paint by numbers. And I think when that piece came together, yeah, yeah and yeah. just the inspiration, being excited about about doing these these paint by number clowns. Yeah, 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 because yeah. that was, it was an early piece, um, and that was our first foray into trying some of these techniques that we didn't really yeah. know how they would go kind of thing. And mm -hmm. we, um, once that the lines and the image were kind of fired on there, got it out of the kiln, and we're like, oh, there's something here. We yeah. were pretty jazzed about that. Yeah, yeah. Corey asks, was it difficult to elicit genuine laughter and genuine tears for the audio piece? And what did you think about to get yourselves there? Oh, I don't know if I want to answer that. Oh, that's so, that's, <laughs> that's such so, a mean question. So loaded. Um, well, we did it separately, again, because of um, the pandemic and being in our respective uh, places where we live. Mm -hmm. So we each had to record um, like 30 seconds to a minute of just straight sobbing or straight laughing and then I had a good friend uh, who's a film editor um, you know make the tracks for us um, yeah I mean I know I don't want to talk about what I was thinking about when I was crying um, I think I just maybe got high when I was laughing <laughs> <laughs> good one good one I think I heard you laughing and then I started laughing and then I just recorded it. Yeah, yeah. And the sobs were I just was thinking about what was going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I probably had just like listened to the news or was listening to NPR or mm -hmm. something. Yeah, yeah. I just 
said <laughs> yeah there's, there's definitely a lot there was a lot to cry a lot, about a lot of yeah. prompts that can make you cry yeah for sure yeah so any other, any other questions yeah uh laurie asks would love to hear your inspiration or the story behind thoughts and prayers Ooh. oh okay mm -hmm. um should we go over there or yeah, yeah okay we could yeah. We? yeah yeah let's go over okay Lori who? <laughs> Lori Kunzadi. Oh, hi, Lori Kunzadi. Mm. <laughs> okay, here we are with thoughts and prayers. Yeah. So um, again, we had this idea of uh, using using these clown horns to communicate, and uh, we tried a few different. We did a lot of trial and error, yeah, we trying did. to figure out how we wanted this to look. Yeah, we kind of made some black, like we made them look a little bit more realistic, and then we decided that um, we wanted to make them more kind of ghost-like. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the work in the show has like this nostalgia, this nostalgic feeling to it mm -hmm. and a kind, kind of ghostly feeling. So um, we ended up making the horns out of clear glass and then using a technique called scabo to make them look like kind of antique glass. Yeah, kind of crusty. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And originally um, we had thought about just piling them up on the floor and having a big like spotlight on mm -hmm. them like you would have in the big top. Uh, but then we we decided we wanted to elevate them, mm -hmm. and uh, we settled on making uh, this uh, this kind of stand that is like reminiscent of the ones that maybe elephants would stand on or yeah, something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that yeah. have like the painted diamonds, and you know, we kind of like stripped all the color away, and and what's left is just the skeleton of um, of nostalgia and. Yeah, I mean, the, the title also looks pretty specifically refers to, you know, what people are extending after, you know, all of the mass shootings and stuff mm -hmm. that happen. And, um, you know, it just, it seems kind of trivial, like that's not gonna, you know, all the thoughts and prayers are not gonna do anything to kind of stop that kind of violence. And so I think we wanted to kind of really accentuate the hollowness of that sentiment, you know, both with like the clearness of the glass, the ghosty, ghostliness of it, but even the fact that we're using these clown horns is, you know, not something that we often think of as being like a very sincere mode of expression, you know, exactly. and, um, uh, you know, here kind of underlying, underlining the emptiness sometimes of those sentiments. We have a question from Sandra De Marchena. Um, she says, thank you for your presentation and she'd like to know where you get your inspiration for your pieces. Well, <laughs> we have over here and actually even oh, yeah. this collage behind yeah. us yeah. on the wall um, shows like a bunch of things that have inspired us over the years. Um, there's definitely some images of some of the Venetian glass clowns that we talked about. Um, these Commedia dell'arte pieces. Yes. And, yep. Yep. Um, and then this, uh, this Venetian pipe. And we actually have, do we have that one in here? I think oh, it's yeah, over, it's over there. there. Yeah, so yeah, some of these yeah. things are here in the galleries as well. And our trip to Coney Island. So yeah, we made yeah. kind of this collage wall and then blew it up so, our, so people could see what our inspirations are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so there's the glass clowns. Here's like a paint by number. Like this is a version of um, one of the ones Pops. that we used. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's here's the original Grampy. This is the one that hung in my parents' house that I thought was like a masterpiece. A masterpiece. I thought my <laughs> grandfather was this heroic painter. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that inspires us. Plus, just kind of working together and technique um, and technique. We're very yeah. technical driven yeah, and, yeah but it's really it's been really great like being able to do like more narrative work mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you know putting this show together mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Based, loosely based on clowns yeah of okay. all things <laughs> i know 
Yeah. Uh, Yuka asks, did all the works evolve together or was there more of a linear journey to the creation of all the pieces? Did all the works evolve together or were they linear? Hmm, I think they were linear, I would say. Yeah, yeah, definitely we would get some finished and start on others. That's not mm -hmm. like everything was sort of a little bit done and then all of a sudden everything was no, finished. No. Um, I think as we were kind of working through some of the panels and kind of seeing where they were going, um, then we would, you know, concentrate on that. So we got that right. And then, you know, kind of start maybe thinking about the next ones, but not totally. Yeah, we would sure have going. different things in, in the works. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and again, I feel like, you know, we worked in a kind of collagey sort of way, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. like layering, layering and layering mm -hmm, to come up with the, the final pieces. Yeah, yeah. And we also wanted to have a balance of uh, you know, wall pieces and, you know, three-dimensional pieces and some that kind of are a little bit in between, you know, yeah. some that are sort of 2D or on the wall, but have three-dimensional elements to them mm -hmm. as well to kind of, um, you know, sort of play with how these pieces exist in space. Yeah, yeah. Like sad plaid. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's a, a wall shelf. piece, but it's on a shelf. That was actually our first piece. Mm -hmm. And we made that uh, in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. at, uh, at University of Wisconsin. Yeah. Stevens wow. Point. Stevens Point. Yeah. 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 And should we talk about the book? Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the book. The book. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art, um, with you know uh, the help of a lot of great supporters. Thank um, you all. Yes. Thank you all. And, um, yeah. Uh, are publishing a, a catalog of uh, of this show, so there's that'll be hopefully ready in a couple of weeks, um, so available for purchase here, um, or contact Nancy or I. Yeah. And um, but it, ha it has plates of images of all of the pieces in the show. Um, this collage is in there, and um, yeah, we're super excited to see that. We've been watching its progress and um, there's know, a lot that goes into making a catalog. There is, it turns out. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, but it's coming together and we're super thrilled with yeah. it. So um, if you have come and seen the show and wished there was a book that you could have procured, there will be one. So reach back out and um, I'm sure one arrangements could be made to get one to you. It can also be purchased online through the Bema store for $24 or in person and members get a 10% discount. <laughs> are there plans for this show after Bima? We are hoping for it to travel. We're still um, working on finding other venues. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we hope this isn't the only time this is work is on exhibit. Yeah. Um, I think it's just a matter of time. You know, it's been a really difficult time as museums have come out of the pandemic. Everybody's schedules are just you know like bombs have gone off basically yeah. so it's just trying to figure out where people are and what they can schedule and, and manage um has definitely been challenging i can't imagine what it's been like for museum directors and curators yeah so we're just kind of you know we've got some feelers out and we're just sort of waiting for dust to settle and hopefully we'll hear back for a couple of other venues yeah so moma if you're listening <laughs> And that said, you know, I'd like to thank Greg mm -hmm. Robinson for mm -hmm. when we proposed this show, we might have had maybe four pieces done, if even that. And Greg just jumped on it, it and, and, and he ran with it. And we've been so thrilled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, been... and we got postponed and postponed and postponed because of COVID, okay. of course. But now it's wonderful because people can come in and, and actually see the work in person. Right. Yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 And another lesson from the circus is how to pack up the circus tent so it can travel from town to town. <laughs> so if you are an art museum out there listening, um, they've put a lot of thought. We've um, built some pedestals and platforms and um, have helped to fund um, special boxes so things can be stacked on a you know, pallet and shipped really economically. <laughs> anyway, yes, it's, yeah, it's um, true. It, and it's, it's true. just part of their creative spark that's also led to um, those possibilities. I mean, a lot of thought's been put into it. And Greg, what's the response been to the show? Oh, it's, it's amazing. And also for people of all ages, you know, when I say that it's fun on the surface and then multi-layered in terms of meaning and personal information and all of that sometimes that can scare families you know it's mm -hmm. like oh my kid's gonna 
really want to get into the, this work and then they're going to learn something I don't want them to know. But our, um, the, the gallery um, hosts, including volunteer docents, um, they're really good at just kind of assessing what sort of layers people want to dive into. Mm. And families are great. Um, you know, we're really, really proud of how um, people respect the work, as fragile as it is. I mean, we have stanchions, but um, the response is, is amazing. And then Trimpin's show at the other end of this gallery um, is about lives in transition, homelessness with Path with Art. And um, it's, it's a very interesting compliment because again, it's, it's, you walk in and see this antique card and there's a musical activity um, and then people get into further layers. And um, yeah, it works well. It does. The, this piece and his work with ours and this ex exhibition. So definitely worth a trip. Yeah. Have you had any evil clown moments? <laughs> <laughs> You mean in general or <laughs> while we were making the show? Uh, hasn't everyone had a little evil clown moment? Yeah, I guess it is it is kind of interesting how people either love or hate clowns. Yeah. Like we have one friend that was just was like, I'll never go see that show. I hate clowns. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, I, I don't know if we have had particularly. I mean, we've tried maybe staying away from that a little bit. I did watch it. Oh, I, I didn't yeah, see I that. That was yeah. kind of scary. Yeah. But yeah. Other than that, not, not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very, very much for an amazing show. No clowning around. <laughs> and um, thanks to the audience for all their great questions and for joining us tonight. And please do come and see the exhibition um, and um, look into the book. Thanks Thank so much. Thank, Thank you. you. And please join us for our next uh, Untold Stories. We have events coming up on the 4th, uh, an artist talk. We have an artist talk with Kurt Salmelson uh, on Wednesday, August 4th at seven. We have Altered Books, Botanizing Hope Workshop, Saturday, August 28th at 1 p.m. And Drawing from Memories of Nature Workshop, Saturday, September 12th at 10 a.m. Uh, on behalf of all the staff here at BIMA, I'd like to thank you all for coming out and supporting the arts tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank all of our guests here, um, Nancy, and, and uh, <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, Yes. And uh, we hope to see you at Untold Stories again soon. Thank you.